In the spring of 1863, a local dairy farmer was having trouble selling his milk to whiskey drinkers. He enlisted the help of two young men, Jefferson Applejack Goodby and Richard Montgomery Silverstein. Legend has it that Goodby wrote his idea on a napkin and showed it to Silverstein, who remarked that the type design looked like horseshit. From then on, the men were partners in the frontier sense of the word. The campaign was an immediate success. Word of their skills soon circulated in the marketplace. Captain Hannibal Dorito asked for their help selling his whiskey-filled corn biscuits. Jeremiah Sonic hired the men to promote his ride-in saloon. And the inventive Google Brothers advertised a steam engine, which could produce pornography at the turn of a knob. The workload was extraordinary, and the company rapidly expanded. But while Jefferson and Richard were entertaining clients, conditions on the factory floor were deplorable. Indentured criminals and vagabonds worked round the clock, exposed to raw sewage, with no access to clean water, only beer. This gang of workers called themselves the E-Level. My darling, it is past 11 of the clock, and we have yet to receive buy-off from the creatives. There are rumors they may still be at dinner. I fear my dog shall never get walked. David McNewton Sullivan, 1863. A British noble, Sir Derek M. Robsonshire, sailed round Cape Horn to join their partnership and demonstrated an impressive ability to count beans. He famously declared that continual new business was necessary for survival. <laughs> to sell new ideas, they drew stories on boards, which they called boards with stories on them. Then they carried them a great distance, in very harsh conditions, all in the hopes of winning more work. You know, it's really incredible what they went through because um, I think they were making it up as they went. Yeah, you know, it's, I think our great-grandfathers would be really proud of the work that we do around here right now. Mm -hmm. 